Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Psychology 1100 Lifespan Development at Utah Valley University. In it, we're looking at the second online quiz for Chapter 7 on Early Adulthood. The first question in this quiz is abstinence syndrome is evident from which of the, excuse me, is evident when which of the following conditions occurs. So substance use is long term, substance use is decreased. Substance use is increased, and substance use is withheld. Well, abstinence syndrome is a lot like withdrawal, and we are talking about when substance use is withheld, when the person is not able to get to uh, whatever it is they have been using. All right, the second question is, adolescence carries with it a certain egocentrism that can most impair which of the following areas? A, judgment and problem solving, B, moral development, C, verbal capacities, or D, quantitative capacities. Well, the egocentrism of adolescence is actually associated with um, judgment and problem solving and the ability, mostly because it, the egocentrism makes it difficult to uh, see other people sort of accurately or your place or your effects on them or, or uh, influence empathy. So it's going to influence a lot of that. Question number three. College students are encouraged to do which of the following to help develop critical thinking skills? A, oversimplify the material so it is understandable. C, simplify the material so it is easier to process. D, draw conclusions from available evidence. Or B, excuse me, D, be open to opposing viewpoints to learn from others. Well, oversimplifying them obviously is a bad thing. Um, we are encouraged to draw conclusions, but develop critical thinking skills, being open to opposing viewpoints to learn from others. And that's really hard because most of the time, if somebody, you know, is politically or religiously or culturally different, you know, especially politically, you tend to assume that the other person is either retarded or evil. And it's, it's not productive. And so the ability to get past that is a very difficult thing, but a very important one in terms of developing critical thinking skills and not just I'm right, you're wrong. Question number four, which of the following is an example of intrinsic reasoning? And the choices are self-efficacy, self-identity, self-esteem, and self-assurance. Now, intrinsic has a lot to do with things being rewarding on their own without being linked to something else. And in this case, the answer is going to be self-identity. Again, who you are and not sort of the rewards you get from the other things like efficacy and esteem and assurance. Question number five which theoretically will pop up. There we go. People rate the attractiveness of faces higher when the face is what? And this is based on research by O'Doherty et al. in 2003. The choices are have enigmatic expressions, or uh, B, are different from their own, or C, are smiling, or D, have dimples. Well, uh, regardless of how you feel about dimples, the correct answer that gets you credit is when faces are smiling. Smiling faces are generally seen as more attractive, which shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but we actually have empirical evidence to support that. Question number six, a love relationship that has both passion and commitment but lacks intimacy is referred to by Sternberg as which of the following? Now you have to remember his triangle that talked about these three uh, factors, passion, commitment, and intimacy. And when you have the first two but not the last, you can call it fatuous love, consummate love, romantic love, or empty love. Well, passion and commitment, but lacking intimacy, like you still don't know their name. This is where you can sort of think of um, a Disney cartoon, um, fatuous love. That's, I love that word. Um, anyhow, number seven, a loss of affectionate feelings, feelings of insecurity and rejection, anxiety, loss of self-esteem, and feelings of mistrust can all result from which of the following? Love loneliness, jealousy, and infatuation. Well, um, as a constellation, the thing they all tend to go with the most strongly is jealousy. Um, and then you can talk about cause and effect, but they are certainly all associated with one another. The number of households consisting of one unmarried man and one unmarried female, uh, in other words, couples who are shacked up, or as we like to say in French, en concubinage, they're concubines. Um, has grown by how much since 1960? So this is over the last 50 years. Is it 10 times higher? 
Is it 15? Is it 20? Or is it 25 times? Well, these are all pretty similar choices. But the, um, despite what people might think that the world's gone straight to hell, it is 10 times higher. So it is a lot. On the other hand, it's the number of households as opposed to the rates. So something to keep in mind. There's also just more people. All right. Uh, question number nine. Which of the following are the two main types of marriage? It's kind of a funny question. Traditional and conventional. Polygyny and polyandry. Monogamy and polygamy. And committed and uncommitted. Okay, some of these they're just kind of making up here. I like the traditional conventional. Polygyny and poly polyandry, by the way, you need to know. Polygyny means more than one wife. And polyandry is more than one husband. Um, anyhow, the two main types, interestingly enough, are in fact monogamy and polygamy. Now, I realize we're in Utah, so we have a different view on polygamy, but there are still many countries in the world where polygamy is legal uh, and is a common social practice. And so monogamy, polygamy, the two most common polygyny. Well, polygamy is a general thing. Could be polygyny or polyandry. Those are both versions of polygamy because polygamy simply talks about uh, a sort of a partner. Um, but those are the two main types. And the last question in the second quiz is this. Which of the following factors have contributed to the increased divorce rates in the United States, that is, between 40 and 50 percent, according to the U.S. Bureau of Census in 2011? Your choices are changes in the laws and increased financial security of women, or B, increased education and marrying too young, C, lack of religiosity and cohabitation, or D, lack of financial support from a spouse and communication. Well, you know, there's a lot of things that determine whether people get divorced. There's also a lot of things that determine whether people stay together in stinky relationships. Um, but the one we're looking for here is number one, answer A, which is changes in the laws. Uh, for instance, the no-fault divorce where you don't have to prove that the other person has done something. And increased financial security of women. Um, have both contributed to the uh, increased divorce rates, or again, sometimes you can put it as the people are less likely to stink around in horrible abusive relationships. You can think of it either way. Anyhow, that is the end of the second quiz on Chapter 7, Early Adulthood for Lifespan Development. Thanks for watching.